Hey everyone, Daryl here. And today we're working on a front suspension issue on the 2008 Mercury Mariner Hybrid. This is going to be the same procedure on the all of the Mariner Escapes and Tributes from like 2001 through 2011, I believe. Um, pretty simple. What we're going to do today is we, we're going to replace the strut assembly and the stabilizer link. And you see this stabilizer link is broken here on the bottom where it mounts to the stabilizer itself. You see the ball there has popped out of the connecting link. So we're going to replace the connecting link. And while we're out here, I've got a pair of slightly used strut assemblies someone gave me. These have uh, a little over 200,000 miles on them, and the ones I was given have about 90,000 miles on them. So we're going to go ahead and replace those too. We have a, so we'll have a little bit better, firmer front end on this, even though it's not sure if there's anything wrong with the struts. I figured half the mileage is going to be a better strut than the ones that are on here. So we're going to remove the bottom stabilizer arm bolt here the top stabilizer arm bolt here three or four nuts that are on top of the strut assembly under the hood compartment let's see what else this u-clip here that holds the brake line to the strut and these two large nut and bolts here that hold the strut to the front and steering knuckle pretty simple straightforward process really doesn't take that long you can save a ton of money, a ton of money by doing this yourself. You don't need to have the car aligned when you get done with this because you're not going to be affecting anything that affects the alignment on it. You should give your tie rod ends, inner and outer, a little check right here. Check your front CV axle boots. Make sure they're not ripped or worn. Check your brakes and rotors while you're here for any wear, unusual thinness of the pads. Um, check your wheel bearing while you're here, you know, for any unusual play or wobble up and down or left and right just make sure your left and right play isn't the tie rod end being loose or sloppy which this one isn't it's perfectly tight actually the tie rod ends and the whole lower control arm on this were replaced about two years ago and not that many miles ago maybe 40,000 miles ago so we're going to go ahead and get started here all right we only have two wrench sizes involved here We've got 14 millimeter for the stabilizer link, top and bottom. 18 millimeter for the two large knuckle to strut bolts. And 14 millimeter for the strut bearing mount bolts on top. So, really just two sizes. We're going to be using a 14 millimeter socket and possibly an open end wrench to hold something, along with an 18 millimeter socket and a wrench. Alright, one more nut I forgot. There's a 10 millimeter nut right there, right there, that holds the brake line, the ABS line, to the strut. That needs to be removed. All right, on top we have these four 14s here. And they come off just like that. All right, I decided to go ahead in the interest of time to go ahead and plug in the air compressor, hook up the half-inch drive pneumatic wrench, and we're going to pop the rest of these bolts off with that. The other thing you can see I've done is I've supported the lower control arm with a second jack. I have one jack mounted on the side frame at the jacking point, and I have this one to support the control arm and keep it up in the air, mainly so it doesn't flop and put stress on the CV join and tie rods, but the other thing is once I get the uh, stabilizer links off, I'll need to raise and lower that control arm to get the stabilizer links to line up in their proper position. So you will need a second jack to raise and lower the control arm and put pressure on it to line up that stabilizer link anyway. So that's the best way to do it, two jacks, one steady and one to go up and down to line things up. Um, maybe if you had two people here working on it, you could do it without that, but I'm recommending two jacks. The other thing is I grabbed a pair of channel lock pliers while I was there for pulling out the U-clip on the brake line. The U-clip is just a little metal tab right there. that You grab it and you work it back and forth out and pull. It's 
called a U-tip or clip because it's got a cutout shaped like a U and it's spring steel and it's got tension on it, spring loaded to hold things in place. We'll just set that aside. It's totally reusable. Once that's out, we work the brake line up and down, drop it down, pull it out, and set it aside like that so that this is all clear. We remove the 10 millimeter bolt ABS cable bracket from that there. So the strut is clear now. The only thing holding the strut in place are the two main 18 millimeter nuts here. And then we've got the stabilizer link here. All right, with the help of that air gun and a quick clip zaps with that, you can see the whole strut assembly drops right out. You just tap it out of the, here's the steering knuckle here. You just push it inward a little and then swing it to the rear of the car and drop it right out of place. It comes right out super easy, not a bit of problems. Here's the brake line bracket we were talking about earlier. Here's the actual brake line over here. And then here's the stabilizer link that's still stuck in here. We're going to need to get a wrench on the back of that nut there and remove that. And then we'll be ready to reassemble. That's the nice part of buying the whole strut assembly. No spring compressors to worry about. You get new spring, new strut bearing, new strut. There's nothing to disassemble or reassemble or wonder if you should have changed the other parts or not. I recommend getting the whole easy strut assembly when you're doing this project. And realistically, the first time you do it, it's going to take you maybe two, two and a half hours, maybe. Um, if you've done it before and you have good tools, you can do this whole project both sides start to finish in just a hair over an hour. It's, it's really easy. All right, on the reassembly process, the first thing we're going to do is put in the stabilizer link into the control arm on the bottom, or torsion bar, I guess I'd call it. Um, we're going to do that first because it's going to be a little bit harder to get to once we get the strut into place, and we'd like to take care of it right away. So the thing about these is they're nice. There's no top or bottom, left or right, up or down. Any one will work on either side. So we're going to take one of the nuts off. I hate not having a camera man. We took one of the nuts off. We're going to just place it through here like that. Then we're going to put the nut on the other side. Like so. And then we're going to... Hmm. Doesn't seem to fit very good. I'm sure it'll go down though. We're going to torque that down. All right, you can see the new connector link in place there and tighten down on the bottom nice and tight. We're just going to push this over and out of the way to give us room to get the new strut up into place. Okay, we're ready to lift the new struts into place. Now the struts do have a difference. There's a left strut and a right strut. And you know, I'm sure most of you know, when you're talking about car parts, the position on a car is always talks about the relationship to left and right as seen when you're sitting in the driver's seat. So this is the driver's side strut, which is the left strut. Even if you're standing in the front of the car, it would be on your right-hand side, but that's not how you do it. You have to be sitting in the seat. And if you're sitting in the driver's seat, this would be on the left side. So this is the left strut. And we're going to put this here in place. And we're going to make sure we've got it lined up. The difference is on these is the position that the brackets are mounted for the stabilizer link and the ABS cable. Those are really the only difference in them. Uh, and of course, to lift this into place up through the underbody, then we're going to line these four holes up with the holes in the fender well on the top of the vehicle in the hood compartment and get a couple of nuts on these studs here to hold it in place, then come back around here and hook it up to the steering knuckle and the stabilizer link. So I'm going to take no one to film this for me, so I'm going to set the camera down. I'm going to lift it up into place and get a couple of the bolts started. All right, that was very easy. Just took a couple seconds. I reached underneath and held it up with my right hand. And I reached over the top here with my left hand. And I started two of the nuts on top. And I was able to let it go and came here and put the other two nuts on top. So I got all four nuts in place. We haven't torqued them down yet. We're going to leave them hang just so we have a little extra flex and wobble. We'll go back down below now. And you can see everything's starting to come into place here. There's a strut in position. The only thing we still have to do is connect the stabilizer link to it. You can 
and kind of pull that over into the general area you can see it's the struts going to have to go up in the air about an inch and a half to line up with that stabilizer link and that's why we got the jack underneath and we've got the steering knuckle here which needs to be pressed into the bracket on the strut and that should be very easy it should pop right into place and we're going to do that next let me get my bolts ready I've got these big bolts with the 18 millimeter ends on them we're going to get those ready to slide in you can see the steering knuckle is in the groove on the strut so now we're going to use the floor jack to raise this is, looks like it needs to come about another three quarters of an inch to an inch in order for the holes to line up and I could let the strut down a little probably and make it happen but instead I'm going to jack up the steering knuckle and that'll keep everything nice and lined up make sure there's nothing pinching or binding here we don't want to cut any of these wires or damage anything here you see that brake lines ready to go back into place there we could put the clip on that I'll show you how to do that real quick because we're that's ready to go right now you put it in place you side the u-clip on and it'll just like pull everything right tight into place sometimes you need to give it a little tap to get it to go in we'll just like lightly tap that and there we go all right you can see the knuckle the strut mount bolts are in I tighten those with the full force of the half inch impact wrench and then I gave him another little turn with the half inch breaker bar the u-clip and the brake ABS line bolt are back in place the bottom uh, torsion connection bar here is in place and torqued and we just that's the last thing we got to do here on this side is line this here up with this hole here as you can see we're about an inch and a half off still so we're going to take the nut off of it so we can get it in easily and then we're going to jack the lower control arm put the blue jack until they line up we're going to put that right back there behind there and we're going to start jacking until that lines up you can see that came right into place pushed it right in got the nut in place and so now we need to tighten that down with a 15 millimeter these replacement ones had a little bit bigger nuts on them than the original equipment ones did and then this side will be all done all right and we're on look at that top and bottom turns out the perfect wrench for putting those on was my 15 millimeter ratcheting ratcheting open end wrench it fits right in here perfectly look at that gives me plenty of room to work and I can ratchet it up and down get it in there really tight and then get on the end of it and push as hard as I can because this this doesn't really require a lot of torque on these these aren't a super tight torque thing that need to be extra extra tight all right, we're going to do something different. We're going to go around to the other side. And when I do that one, after I get this all buttoned up and put back together, I'm going to do a time check. I'm going to see how fast I can do that other side. Now that I've done a few of these with the uh, air wrench and the tools that I have all lined up and ready to go, we're going to see with a little experience how long it's going to take you to do this once you've done the first side and gotten over the hard part. Now I'm guessing it's only going to be about a half hour for the other side. But I'm going to go start to finish from the time you put the jack underneath the side of the car to lift it up until you let it back off the jack and it's ready to drive. And we'll see how that goes. Keep watching. All right, at 6.25 p.m., you can see all my tools I'm going to need are set up right here, both jacks, the air tool, and I'm ready to go. I'll be back when it's done. 7 p.m. exactly. 35 minutes start to finish from putting the jack under the edge to letting the jack down 35 minutes I did the full strut replacement and the rod connecting rod thing let me find that here this connecting rod on this side wasn't broken and it had I noticed it had been changed in the past it wasn't the original one because it had grease fittings on the side and the thing is no one had ever bothered to grease it and it's really like loose very loose kind of squeaky noisy so i said you know we're just going to go ahead and replace these even though it is a moog 
someone put an expensive part in there. It's a Moog greasable link, stabilizer link, and it's a shame someone didn't follow through and actually grease these because these are supposed to be good parts. This one's, um, this side's almost totally seized up. It's very hard to move and very squeaky and dry inside. Yeah, they might have been okay if I would have greased them up and put them back on, but I just thought, well, I bought the two new ones. I'm not going to take the chance on them. I'm just going to replace them both with the sealed non-greasable ends and see what happens. All right, we're back together. Time for a test drive. Thanks for watching. I say you do this project yourself. Um, you can get a good deal on those connecting links. I got mine for 24 bucks for a pair of them on eBay. Um, and if you can get a good deal on the struts from either online or AutoZone or Riley's, one of those type places, you can do this whole job in an hour and a half to two hours the first time you do it. And it's going to cost you probably 250 bucks total for the parts, maybe. I'm thinking, I'm thinking 90 bucks a piece for the struts, and that's 180, and 30 for the links, that's 210. If you were to take this to a shop and have it done, you'd be looking at an easy five, six hundred dollar bill there for those this repair job. And you can do it yourself and save that money for other more important things. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now.